Thank you all for coming. Today we're here because the Senate continues to refuse to offer any solutions to Ohio's budget deficit. Last Friday, June 26, Senate President Bill Harris rejected our balanced budget framework and is now holding our state hostage in opposition to an issue he previously supported. Since last Friday, the Senate has failed to offer any alternative solutions to fill an almost $1 billion budget gap. So on Friday, he told us he was not supporting video lottery terminals. We didn't hear from him on Saturday. We didn't hear from him on Sunday. We didn't hear from him on Monday. We didn't hear from him on Tuesday. We haven't heard from him on Wednesday. The Senate Republicans' silence is a clear indication that they are determined to make further cuts to the vital services in Ohio. Given the drastic nature of these cuts, it is imperative to find out the extent of the human impact. We will be holding hearings tomorrow, Monday and Tuesday, to understand the full gravity of, an addition, of the Senate Republicans' additional $1 billion budget cuts. In the meantime, we are forced to pass continuing budget after continuing budget, which only makes a difficult process <coughs> even more painful for Ohio. As we sit here now today, the state is losing $8 million per week in Medicaid dollars, due to these short-term continuing budgets. Food banks around the state are scrambling to provide for hungry Ohioans. Every day that the Senate refuses to take action, they dig Ohioans deeper into fiscal hardship. What's especially troubling is the apparent double standard that is largely responsible for the budget gridlock. In 2007, the Senate passed SB 125, which would expand gambling at horse tracks, the video racing terminals. Now, in the most serious economic times Ohio has seen in decades, the Senate is refusing a similar expansion that would save the state from further reductions in services and save families from paying higher taxes. In other words, they are not abiding by this responsibility. If the Senate continues to reject our balanced budget framework, they owe it to Ohioans to tell us what additional services they would cut or what taxes they propose to raise. Short of that, it's time to stop obstructing the process. Are there any questions? Could you explain where the caucus stands on considering any more cuts shallow or deeper that the Senate might send over here to the House, would your caucus support deeper cuts of a billion dollars? Well, we have no proposal to actually examine at this time, so it would be um, hard for us to say. Our caucus supports the video, uh, the video uh, lottery terminals because it will protect Ohioans who are most in need during this time, and that is the proposal we've put forward. Jennifer, can you explain to us how you're going to hold a hearing on the pain of budget cuts when you don't know what those cuts are yet? All I can tell you, what we do know from them is that they have rejected our proposal. The Senate President is not supporting BLTs at this time, and he does not want to raise taxes. So that only leaves budget cuts. If you look at the budget and you, you what the number we are hearing is 20, 30 percent cuts, what does that mean? We cannot make a decision on a proposal that they're going to bring to us without knowing how that will impact Ohioans' everyday lives. It is not our budget cuts. It is the Senate Republican budget cuts because that's where, they, that's where they're left. What are a lot of these people that who will be coming in and testifying about all these hearings on the pain of these budget cuts? Won't they already be able to come in and say, tell you about all the pain that they've already felt from previous budget cuts or the budget cuts that the governor outlined in this framework? Well, we are, we are providing that opportunity again. We've already made $2.3 billion in uh, cuts. $900 million is, this, is the stopgap amount of money that the BLT should raise. We need to know if, what even the further cuts might look like that they would propose, how they will impact regular Ohioans. 
governor said earlier this week that he thinks you folks should work through the holiday weekend to get this done. Uh, why isn't finance scheduled for Friday or Saturday or to the weekend? We are working with that also with logistics. We've been told that um, downtown Columbus is impossible to get through on uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but we are certainly considering that. 